Bravo. Madam Speaker, as a member for, of Parliament for Winford Nipissing Pembroke, home to the training ground of the Warriors at Get Garrison Petawawa, Canada's largest army base, I welcome the opportunity to hold this government accountable for the safety and security of our women and men in uniform. Earlier this year, I asked a very specific question regarding the readiness of Canadian soldiers now that they find themselves in a situation where chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear uh, CBRN, for short, weapons are threatened. The lack of response follows the short-sighted decision by a previous Liberal government to shut down the Emergency Preparedness College in Armprior. It was confirmed this week by the CBC government propaganda agency. The earliest the Canadian armed forces might be properly equipped and trained against these 21st century terrors is 2030. This government does not learn. The war in Ukraine is today, not eight years from now, today. With, uh, today, there are more than 200,000 active cases of COVID-19 in Canada. Canadians will recall the decision by the government to send soldiers to Latvia during the COVID-19 pandemic without inoculation. A significant COVID-19 outbreak struck Canadian Armed Forces members deployed to Latvia. The majority of the deployed Canadian soldiers were not vaccinated ahead of their mission because of the failure of this government to procure vaccines after a botched deal with the Chinese communists. What limited vaccines were received were given to federal prisoners, rapists, murderers before our soldiers. The official position of the divisive socialist coalition prime minister was, our soldiers are young and healthy. They should recover from the virus. They would, dare I say, the words to the censor-loving socialist coalition that does not believe in science, develop natural immunity. What a hypocrite our blackface-wearing prime minister is when he expects soldiers to develop a natural immunity and not other Canadians. It's a failure to both inadequately prepare and to fail to urgently respond in a manner that's commensurate with the threat. Chemical weapons such as nerve agents, once inhaled, can directly attack the respiratory systems of the soldiers and be fatal. Thus, even a small exposure to contaminated air can pose a significant risk to soldiers. Soldiers who are exposed to CBRN weapons become casualties. CBRN material is used as an umbrella term for those agents in any physical state and form which can cause hazards to populations, territories, and forces. It also refers to chemical weapons, precursors, and facilities, that is equipment or compounds that can be used for the development or deployment of weapons of mass destruction, CBRN weapons or CBRN devices. Over the past few years, CBRN weapons or CBRN devices uh, have been used. So over the past few years, there's been an increase in the number of conflicts globally. This has led to an increase in the demand for CBRN defensive products such as personal protective equipment, detection systems, vehicle-mounted improvised explosive devices detection systems, detonators, and decontamination devices. Canada has been ignoring the threat while other countries got prepared. The losses in terms of life and equipment have triggered the enhancement of CBRN defense for our troops. But despite budgetary constraints, our allies in NATO and Europe are investing in imp improving CBRN defense for both troops and vehicles. In September 2021, the NATO had held its 17th annual conference in weapons of mass destruction, arms control, disarmament, and non-proliferation in Copenhagen. Canada was warned of the threat. NATO's combined C Joint CBRN Defense Task Force and NATO Deployable Military Asset is a key part of the Alliance's work on CBRN defense, and it consists of CB... Uh, uh, actually, there was a little bit more time that I gave her flexibility, but uh, the Honourable uh, Par uh, Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of National Defense. Thank you, Madam Speaker. COVID-19 has affected every part of our society and every Canadian, including members of our Canadian Armed Forces. I would like to clarify that, in fact, COVID-19 did not stop CBRN training for our new recruits, as the member has inc incorrectly uh, alleged. Although some of our training and recruiting had to be scaled down during the earliest days of the pandemic, our military was not stood down, Madam Speaker. To say so is completely inaccurate and frankly disrespectful to the Canadian Armed Forces members who have worked tirelessly to help Canadians through this pandemic. 
We will never compromise on readiness, and our priority is maintaining a fighting force that can be deployed anywhere in the world. Russia's egregious invasion of Ukraine has not only resulted in instability across the globe, but it has shown that we must never step back from that responsibility. Today, our organization is in the midst of a substantial forces-wide reconstitution program to rebuild our strength and readiness for the future. This includes making sure our members receive the right training so that they can effectively and safely perform their required duties. I'd like to thank the member opposite for highlighting the importance of the chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear course. Canadian Forces leadership and recruit schools have continued to provide this course given that all CAF members require CBRN training to qualify for deployment. And as part of basic military qualification and basic military officer qualification, CAF members also learn to operate in a contaminated environment. National Defense maintains and manages a robust inventory of chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear protection equipment to ensure that Canadian Armed Forces members can safely conduct operations in the most adverse con conditions. On operations, Canadian Armed Forces members are either issued protection, protection equipment directly, including CBRN equipment, or the equipment is transported and stored on location for use if needed. As part of pre-deployment uh, pre processes, equipment is verified for proper functionality. Canadian Armed Forces members also receive training to ensure they know how to use such equipment. To ensure the readiness of our Canadian Armed Forces, we, also, uh, we are also improving and modernizing our operational cap capabilities in the face of a rapidly evolving secu uh, uh, security environment. We're moving forward on important projects for the Navy, Army, and Air Force, including our Arctic offshore patrol ships, new armored combat support vehicles for the Canadian Army, and our planned fleet of 88 advanced fighter jets. And we're ensuring the CAF is ready to meet adversities in non-traditional domains like cyber, space, and information, including uh, by integrating our activity in those domains with what we are already doing at sea, on land, and in the air. Through our reconstitution efforts and the work uh, we're doing to deliver on key capital projects, we're making sure that our people are well-equipped and well-supported for whatever comes their way. This will ensure they're ready to meet traditional and non-traditional defense and security threats to Canada and our allies from across all domains and from all directions, now and for decades to come. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. And NATO's combined joint CBRN Defence Task Force consists of the CBRN Defence Battalion and the CBRN Joint Assessment Team. The task force was activated for the very first time in a deterrence and defence capacity in March 2022 in response to Russia's unprovoked invasion of Ukraine and its dangerous rhetoric around nuclear, chemical and biological weapons. When facing a new threat, be it chemical, biological, radiological or nuclear, there's a call for safety. Protect our women and men at the highest level using all precautions. Scale the protection up. Despite repeated warnings from our allies, as recently as last month, the threat to our soldiers is being downplayed or ignored. The threat of an escalation in hostilities to, the, to use these weapons is very real. Canada needs to be procuring, maintaining, enhancing, and developing effective soldier protection systems now. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. While COVID-19 has impacted some cafes,